Now that you set both short and long-term health goals, you're ready to roll. But chances are you'll come to a point where you don't feel as motivated as when you first started. This video is for times like that. All of us want to live healthy lives, and yet we're all too aware that sometimes our habits don't match up with our goals. It's easy to agree with health information intellectually, but much more difficult to put it into practice. You can probably relate. Have you ever set a health goal but failed to reach it? Why does this happen? I believe the answer is ambivalence. Ambivalence occurs when you have mixed feelings about your health goals. On one hand, you want to make choices to improve your health, but on the other hand, you meet resistance and obstacles. Healthy changes seem out of your reach. If left alone, ambivalence can be a bad thing, but there are simple steps you can take to resolve your ambivalence and achieve your goals. Let me show you how to coach yourself through the process, but first, Pause the video to grab a piece of paper so you can take some notes. Step one, affirm your desire to be healthy. You care about your health. If you didn't, you wouldn't be watching this right now. The first step to resolving ambivalence is to affirm your positive desire to be healthy. You can start by writing down several affirming statements such as, my health is valuable to me. I'm investing time and energy into wellness. I want to be healthy for my family. Or I want to be disease free. The next step is to rate your readiness. Pick a health strategy you know you'd like to take advantage of but are having trouble implementing. For example, exercise. On a scale of zero to 10, identify how ready you are to start exercising. Zero means you're not motivated or interested at all. 10 means you're highly motivated and excited to start. Let's say you decide you're a five. Don't worry, we can work with that. Now that you've ranked your readiness, you need to explain why you chose the number you did. First of all, why didn't you choose a lower number? If you picked five, why didn't you pick a three or a four? Take some time to think about this and write it out or explain it to someone. Most likely, the reason why you didn't choose a lower number is because part of you is very interested in making a change like exercising. You're aware of the health benefits and you want to experience them. The next question is, why don't you pick a higher number? Why not a seven or an eight? Take some time to write this down. This will help you identify the obstacles in your way. Maybe you've had a hard time fitting exercise into your schedule. Maybe you've tried before and failed. Maybe you haven't yet found the type of exercise that you enjoy. Explaining your rating will help you identify the ambivalence or mixed feelings you have about whatever health goal you're working on. In this case, exercise. Part of you wants to engage in a health behavior, but part of you doesn't. Now that you've identified the thoughts that are causing the ambivalence, you can work to address them. Step four is to resolve the ambivalent thoughts. Write down a few reasons why it's worth it to push through the obstacles that are holding you back. What are some practical things you could do to make this happen? Identify your objections one by one and decide whether they're valid. If your objection to exercising is you don't have enough time, Decide whether that's really true. Maybe you don't have time to spend an hour at the gym each day, but could you fit a few short walks into your schedule? Once you've confronted your objections, it's time to take action. Push through the ambivalence. Choose to identify with the part of you that does want to change. You do care about your health. You do want to improve. You can be successful. Embrace the fact that you are a person who wants to be healthy. Believe it and act on it. Step five is to take a baby step. It's true that our actions follow our thoughts, but it's also true that our thoughts follow our actions. Sometimes the most persuasive thing you can do to motivate yourself is to make a tiny health choice and just experience 
how good it feels. For example, maybe you just need to pause the video and go for a short walk. Notice how you feel when you return. Do you have more energy? Do you feel any better? Would you like to feel this way more often? Maybe you are more ready to start exercising than you thought. After all, you already did start. When you're overwhelmed at the idea of a new goal, don't overthink it. Just take a few baby steps in the right direction. You can use these five steps to resolve your ambivalence about all kinds of different habits, exercise, food, or whatever goal you want to achieve. Remember, it's very natural to have mixed feelings about health goals. Part of you wants to change, but part of you is more comfortable doing things the old way. The secret to success is to identify with a part of you that wants to change. Remind yourself that you're valuable, that you care about your health, that you're committed to moving forward. The more you think like a healthy person, the more you'll become a healthy person. I have no doubt that you will succeed.